Welcome to day 11 of the 30 day short bus build. Today we are going to make the custom kitchen cabinet section. Uh, and I'm gonna do my best to kind of teach you how I do that. So I'll show you the section here. And if you watch the planning video, you'll remember what we're doing here. But for anybody who didn't watch that, I'm gonna kind of talk you through it. So we are going to have obviously so my countertop is an inch thick right average countertop height is 36 inches so I'm gonna cut it to 35 inches so it's 36 the countertop also the bus has this inch lip right and I want to do 24 inch wide cabinets now in past builds I've notched this out of the cabinetry and then pushed the cabinet up against the wall I'm not going to do that in this bus. I'm going to cut it to 23 inches wide, set it up against that lip and bring it 24 inches out. The reason I'm going to do that is one thing you need to consider when you're building is airflow. Like if, if there's a decent amount of gap between things, air can kind of flow through it, dry things out. Um, the, the closer your gaps are, it's just easier for moisture to get trapped in there, which turns into mold. So my reasoning behind leaving that inch gap back there it's just just to have some air moving through there keep it nice and dry and also the one thing i learned when i did butt the cabinets all the way up against the wall is when i go to run wires i was having to take hole saws and cut holes through it all so i can get wires through it so i'm just gonna leave that gap and it just leaves airflow I can just pass wires all the way around the bus, no problem. And that's kind of why I'm going to do it. Just so you know, over here in the cabinet, we're going to have a pull-out trash can, which is something I've never done before. I usually do pull-out, I forget what the heck I call it, but anyways, pull-out trash can there. There's going to be a pull-out fridge here. There'll be a stack of drawers here, a drawer for silverware somewhere around here. And this will be the sink area. This is going to open up and the tanks, water tanks are going to be in there. Gray tank or gray water will drop down through the floor to a gray tank with a remote release underneath the bus. And then right here, something different I'm going to do is we're going to put a wall right here and leave it open. And I'm going to put a closet rod across. That way you can have just a little bit of hanging storage and yeah, I think you could fit a decent amount of hanging storage there. And the, the cool thing about clothes, the reason I don't want to have the wall come all the way out here is because of this. Like, somebody driving, you know, if there's plywood there, they can't, you know, clothes, this can lean back against that no problem. And I just think it's a cool way to use this space because I don't know if you can tell, but this kind of tapers in so it's not straight. I don't know. That's kind of our, our idea for that. So that's the mission in this video. We're gonna make a kitchen cabinet and I'm gonna do my best to teach you how I do it. So let's go get into that right now. Just made our cut list. We're gonna do 23 by 35 wall here, 25 by 35 divider here, and then we're gonna do a 24 by 72 because it's gonna go all the way up and then we'll find this curve. Maybe we could notch it out there because this wall just gets funky. So that's our cut list. Let's go cut them boards. Got our pieces cut. We're gonna go inside the bus and find out uh, basically the space between what we need here um, and then cut, cut some strips to kind of put it together. So let's go do that. Okay, a little tip. Try not to cut everything all at once because you'll just save yourself a lot of issues, right? I forgot about that wheel well. 
So we're gonna have to notch out one of these to go around that wheel well. We're gonna figure that out right now. Moral of the story, kind of build it as you go. Because you can think you got it all figured out. Maybe you're really smart and you do. I know I don't. Okay, as you can see, I kind of got like a lot of the pieces cut for the first part of the kitchen cabinet. I don't like to get too far ahead because you run into weird things. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to sand all this, uh, prep it, and then put in the first like little section of the kitchen cabinet and just kind of set it up there so we can kind of see it and kind of build off of it. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. So we're gonna sand all this stuff and get it put together and then put it in there. And also I think we have to build most of it inside because we can't be going through the door with the whole cabinet. So let's go. So this is all three quarter inch material. I'm gonna go through and mark all the pocket holes for what I'm putting together for now and then we'll pocket hole them and sand them so let's do that okay these are the main like structural pieces of the kitchen cabinet and one thing that I do differently than a lot of most people is I actually frame with three quarter inch material instead of two by if you look three quarters is only that thick, right? So three quarters on each side, that's it. Versus if you had inch and a half of two by three, then three quarter on top, like those little big fat three inch pieces, that adds up over the course of a build fast. So I only use two by three on the bed frame. The rest of this build is gonna be built with three quarter inch plywood. Um, which brings me to my next point. This is the main structural piece that's gonna be the kitchen cabinet. And I am gonna pocket hole uh, the bottoms here so that it can attach to the floor. So these pocket holes are attached to the floor, but I'm also going to pocket hole the tops. And that is to connect the countertop. So I can sit the countertop on there, use pocket holes, go up into it. Bam, so that's what we're up to. We're getting ready to pocket hole and prep this stuff to kind of get put together in the bus. Okay, I'm using pre-finished plywood because it's a super industrial finish and it cuts down on build time. I don't gotta paint my cabinets every time. So you never sand on the pre-finished face, right? And this pencil mark that I use will literally just wipe off. Another reason I really like pre-finished plywood is because it can't get dirty. Like, and it's super hard. That finish is so industrial. Like we could never put something that good on that face. So if you look, you can see where the saw blade kind of roughed it up a bit. All we're gonna do is take a sander and kind of just break the edge on the pre-finished side. I'll wipe the pencil marks off and then I'll break the edge on the back side, sand it, and then this one will be done. All right, we're at that point. We're gonna pre-screw it all, and then we're gonna take it in and start blasting, huh? Eh? Alright, 
there's the first section of the kitchen cabinet and down there's a wheel well can't do much with that this slides out we're just going to do a door that covers the whole thing and then you can have like rubber gloves or whatever in there so the next section that we're about to build is for the fridge so the only thing I know for sure that we need is another one of these walls and then I need to build the cradle for the fridge and then we can get that dimension from this side of the cradle to this side with the slider so we can't do these dimensions yet because we don't know them. We just, we know we need that wall and I need to go build a cradle for that fridge. This is the fridge that is going in the project bus. This is the Set Power RV60D. Set Power did send this over. They're a sponsor of this build. Uh, this fridge sells for about 500 bucks. And, but they gave us a discount to give to you guys. If you guys want one of these, one thing I like about this is it is a lot smaller so it can fit inside of this build pretty easily. We're gonna put it on 500 pound sliders. We're gonna build a little cradle for it. So uh, I've used these fridges before. They're really good. If you're looking for an inexpensive fridge, these are the way to go, in my opinion. Uh, 500 or less, these are awesome. So we're gonna build a little cradle for this. One feature that's cool about this is you can change the uh, It'll only open from one way, but you can change it to whatever direction that you want, which is pretty, pretty nice. Just, you know, because they don't know what your build is going to look like. Uh, the one thing, but yeah, so let's build a cradle for this. And if you end up wanting one of these, I'll have a discount code in the description. And I'll put the discount code here for one of those. So let's keep building. Slight change of plans. We decided, so we've built the first little section of our kitchen cabinet there. We decided to bring in everything that's going in this area so that we can kind of visualize how this is going to go. Um, and one thing we changed is we're going to put the fridge that way instead of this way. It's just going to be easier to use. And then, because if we do it the other way, like the control panel is going to be in the back. It's just not going to be cool. So... I think that's what we're going to end up doing is this right here. Um, and we're going to build, put a wall here after the cradle's there. And this will hang off of that wall. And that's kind of where we're at. So let's, uh, let's build a cradle for that fridge. Let's talk about what we're doing here. So fridge is, I do have 500 pound sliders, right? They're locking sliders to keep it from the fridge from coming out. That typically should be enough, but I'm in the habit of whenever I'm doing a fridge pull out, I always put casters on it. Just, so those are really supporting the weight and then the sliders are just locking it, pulling out and pushing in. It just, it really helps having a little droopy, dripping fridge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do them all. So that's what we're doing right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the cradle made for the fridge. Jaylena, give me a demonstration. Uh, got the casters on the bottom. And then we got the uh, ports right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are gonna go figure out how wide we need to make this. Okay, so we're dry fitting the fridge in here, and I stuck the sliders on each side. They're sitting up on pieces of scrap three quarter, so that I could take a tape measure, get the distance from here to there, and then cut my support pieces to uh, put this together. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's get a tape and get that measurement. And it needs to be. Seven and seven eights. Okay, here's our plan. We're gonna tack this in and put the brace right here so that one is locked and we can build off of it. Once that's tacked in, 
we're going to get a measurement on these sliders and we're going to hang both those sliders off that wall and hang the slider off our other wall wherever that's at um, and then we're going to attach the walls with the braces there if we can get that far today we'll be doing all right We're going to see if it slides. Make sure I got a good frame, please. Ready? Mm-hmm. Alright everybody, so this is why I like building off of stuff, because you just run into problems. So we had to loosen these pocket screws and kind of like loosen this all up to get it to like um, slide in and out right. And also what we just realized is this inset stove can't go over here. Because we only have that much area for the sink. So this is pretty much all going to be sink over here. Which means this has to go over here. Which now we're obviously going to have to do something something here. So cool thing about this is we didn't put wood glue on that. It's just pocket screws holding that together. So you can pull that out and kind of figure it out from there. Um, but that... I see a lot of people try and make all their cuts at once on paper. It's just not possible, right? Because it's like you gotta, that's why you see us doing it the way we're doing. We're just kind of building off of each section. This is the end of day 11 and we didn't quite get as far as I wanted to get, but um, we got pretty far. I'm pretty confident that we'll finish building this all out tomorrow and hopefully get Get the doors done we were our we were trying to be done with the whole kitchen side in two days this being day one tomorrow would be day two but we'll be okay if it takes another two days i'm 100 percent confident we could finish this kitchen side in the next two days so hopefully we can get it done tomorrow if not we have another day because the other side is just a bench seat that's going to be easy breezy so that's the end of day 11 and we'll see you tomorrow Uh, 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 uh. Okay, this is day 12 of the 30 day short bus build. We're just getting started. I got the bus moved out of the bay, blah, 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 blah. Um, we left off yesterday. I don't like the way that this, oh yeah, I can even see it right here. The wheels up off the ground. So I don't, these sliders are not lined up right. It's like kind of moving or jamming. I'm thinking that the slider jig probably moved when we were hanging it. Um, 
So I'm gonna I'm not gonna spend all day trying to get this to slide right. I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm going to make a slider jig the old school way with like a piece of scrap wood. And I'll show you how to do that. Or I'm just gonna put one on. It does have casters. These don't need to support anything. The reason I just want that slider on it is because it has a lock, so it'll lock it. So it just won't just fly out when you're driving. So I'm gonna attempt to rehang these sliders one time. If it works out, awesome. If it doesn't work out, I'm just gonna take one off and we're just gonna keep one. So I'm gonna go make a little jig. Basically, I'm just gonna cut a piece of plywood and just rest these on that piece of plywood so I can use the same piece for each side so it should be exactly lined up on both sides. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go cut that little jig. Five and three quarters high. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. Okay, so this is, um, I would say a getaway, but kind of a hack of hanging sliders. I think my jigs moved when I hung it last night, so I got a little funky. So I cut a piece, I measured how high I wanted the slider up, and I cut a piece to that width, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this piece of plywood up here like this. I'm going to rest the slider on it. And I'm probably going to go grab a clamp to clamp it in place. And then I'll screw this in. And then I'll use the same jig for the other side. That way it should be completely straight and completely even on both sides. And in theory, it should slide out fine. So we're going to tack this up now and see if we're right. Just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep? Moment of truth. Let's see how she slides. Oh. oh, that, my friends, is how that's supposed to work. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, bro. That's a fridge you could use right there. Woo! Okay. I've already pre-cut this to fit in that section over there. And what I did is, I don't know if you guys remember, but I made this, like, template for the upper cabinetry. So that's, that's the curve of the roof right there. So I just went in and set this up against the roof and measured from the floor to the bottom of this, sitting this against the roof. And now I'm gonna use this template to finish this curve for, uh, for the roof. So I don't wanna mess this up because this is a lot of lumber right here. And we're just gonna double check, double check before we mark this. So this two cord, we want the pre-finished side inside the cabinet like that, which means this needs to be this way. So we're gonna put the template right there. Where's the line? There we go. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. So far, so good. Plan. Don't think the stories they left behind. Not too high on this end. Won't even squeeze in. So, if you look, can you come over there? So, if you look, you can see right where it's hitting, right? 
So we're going to keep bringing it in and keep kind of tracing, keep kind of tracing it out and keep pushing it in more and more until we can get it flush up against that wall. It really makes me wonder. So this is gonna go into the ground. So I marked it for pocket holes on the floor and up here Obviously, we have these grooves here and we're just gonna attack this up. So we'll probably do one about here So probably Here uh, And that should be enough just to kind of help from this thing from wobbling around it really makes me wonder All right, everybody, we put the countertop on here, and I already measured um, off of the lip down here an inch and an eighth out all the way down. I got the sink on there just to hold some weight. Now I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to mark here, here, and I'm going to hit the lip back here. So that way I can see where the counter is when I'm going out here and making my cuts. Um, so... I'm going to pencil all that out right now, and then we're going to take this out and cut it up. Check it out everybody. So we dry fit it, sinks in there, flush mount burners in there, cabinet or countertops all in there. Now we just, this is the moment we're dry fitting right now. So nothing's mounted down. We still have to finish the countertop. Um, just kind of keep checking because this thing's like 160 bucks. So you don't want to make a mistake like we've done on plywood a million times. This is true you know, and then you're out of luck. So we, we were being very careful. We dry fit everything. That's why I made the marks on the back. So now, now that we know that it all fits, and it all works, we're gonna... Mount well, it. What time is it? I think we still have time. It is four. We have to, we have to finish that countertop. Oh, well then we'll probably only have time to finish it. Because it has to dry, right? Yeah. So we're probably going to go sand that countertop and finish it. Um, and then we can install it all tomorrow. So, height. Okay, so we're using a Butcher Block natural oil sealer. And... Jaylena is putting it on right now and we're getting this this countertop oiled up It's gonna sit overnight so that we can put it in tomorrow morning. So it's supposed to be a one-stop Supposed to be like a one thing you could add more coats if you want, but We're trying to just get this thing done. So everything we buy is quick dry and one step. You know what I'm saying? So that's gonna be the end of day 12 
and we'll see you in the morning. So this is gonna be going on three days for the kitchen cabinet. But that doesn't surprise me because it's the most intricate. So this is second day of the kitchen cabinet and this is day 12 of the entire build and we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to day 13 of the 30 day short bus build. We, I guess every morning I'm coming out here making changes, so let's talk about it. Um, so this is a two and a half inch wide gap across the whole top. Now, what's making me, I, I think a door is gonna hit this when, when it's coming out, because you can see right there, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is I had to build this little cradle for that burner, which this was sponsored by Rec Pro. I think it's a rad burner. I have a discount code for that, so if you want to grab this burner, I'll put a link in the description below for that burner. And I got a link for that fridge too. Both those discount codes will be in the description below. But anyways, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut, I'm gonna cut this panel again, but I'm gonna bring the line across here so that way the door won't be in the way of that at all right I'm also gonna try something fancy and I'm gonna try and inset the doors and drawers on this now if you guys have been following my journey for a while you know I just kinda figured out how to make drawers and now I'm gonna kinda level up and try and like really make it kinda fancy hopefully I don't regret that decision but you know, we're going to give it a shot. So, we're going to recut this panel, put a new one in, we're going to cut the door, and I think I'm going to try and hang the door before I even put the counter on, because I think it's going to be easy. And then we're going to put an inset drawer here, and then we're going to do... My mom is trying to tell me just to do shelves in a door here, but... I think I want to do drawers. So I guess I guess we'll see by the end of the the video what I decide to do there. Oh, and also we're going to put the propane tank there. I'm going to build a little box and some shelves there. So we'll probably do this, do that, do this drawer and then decide what we're going to do here. And maybe we can get all that done today. We'll see. Let's get into it. Okay, I know I've probably talked about it before, but I'm going to re-mention it. I use these soft close um, hidden like hinges. They lock in and out. You don't need locking stuff on your cabinetry. Super sweet. They're kind of expensive. $8 for two, but so worth it. I'll use it for everything I ever do. So we're going to try and put these in here like this. This is my first time trying like a inset door like this. It's gonna have a gap here. We'll see how this goes. Everyone, look what Jaylena and I did. Flush mount door, right? Swings fully extended. It sits against a three quarter ply, completely straight out. Soft close hinges, and boom, it'll soft close by itself and it won't swing open. Nasty. Y'all, I usually don't put hanging closet storage in my builds, but again, we're getting fancy this time around. So, look at this right here. Oh, look at that. 
closets and whatnot, or yeah, whatever. <laughs> Propane door shelf thing. <laughs> so hopefully we can put it in and it works. <laughs> Y'all, we're at a we're at a problem. So we bought 22 inch sliders, right? And the problem is, the way I was gonna build this before, I was gonna have everything like normal, where everything's out here, if that makes sense. <laughs> but with wanting to do everything flush mount, this is only a half inch gap right here instead of three quarter, which is what the face is gonna be. Um, and I can't notch out the back because the reason the backs are that big is because I'm covering the window so you can't see in the cabinet through the window. Uh, so Jaylene and I talked and we're just going to clean up, stop for the day, and I'm going to go return these 22 inch sliders and I'm going to go get 20 inch sliders so that we can build it the way that we want to build it. So you know, things happen once in a while. And we probably won't touch this build again until tomorrow, so this will be the end of day 13. Good morning and welcome to day 14 of the 30 day short bus build. This is also day four of those kitchen cabinets. <laughs> uh, we estimated two days to do the kitchen cabinets and I was, uh, I was mistaken. So. This is the fourth day, this is Friday, this is the last day of the build week, we'll come back Monday, and we are really, really hoping to get the kitchen cabinet side done. So what we need to do today is drawers. So I'm going to show you guys how I make drawers. First thing we're going to do is start with this drawer right here, and then we're going to do those drawers there, figure out what the heck we're going to do there and put the counter on, mount the burner, mount the sink. We gotta get all that done today. I also am going live today, but it's like that needs to happen. Like I can't let that side go into next week. So that's what we're up to. I'm gonna hop into it and I'm gonna hang a slider. And the way I do this is I mark up um, the same size. The, on each side and then I use the Craig jig slider jig um, to hang the slider and then uh, I'll show you how I make my drawer boxes so let's get into the day okay I want to show you something since we're in setting the drawers I'm putting this piece of three-quarter ply up to set the hinge back uh, you know just Gonna try and get a little fancy on this one, so we'll see how it goes. Let's hang the other one. Okay, so how we get our drawer length is, now that these are hung, take our tape up here, and it looks like it's 15 and 1 8 wide. So we're gonna make, we're gonna cut a board, 15th and 1 8 by by 18. 15 and 1 8 by 18, let's go cut it. Okay, so this is our 15 and 8 by an 18. This is how I like to test it. So I'll slip it in between the sliders and it should just be easy like that. Shouldn't jam or anything. So this is good to go and now we're gonna get our dimensions and build, figure out how tall we want our walls. We're going to figure all that out now. Three and a half up. I'm going to do three and a half up so the face plate will cover that. All right, we're going to put this in here and hope it works out. Snap! 
Oh snap, I think we did it, bro. <laughs> I honestly didn't think that we would uh, nail it first try. All right, y'all, we just got done fighting the fight and we have our flush mount silverware drawer. I haven't put handles on it yet, um, but soft close, so comes out and then boom, flush. Look at that. Okay, since we're doing um, inset drawers, I'm making these little uh, plates or face plate things here. And I just kind of measured out, eyeballed like what will be a good distance. Because I want, I want one big drawer for pots and pans and then like two regular drawers. So I think the spacing wise, we're going to do two six inch gaps here. So six inch six inch and then whatever the heck size that is so I'm gonna go make a little spacer a six inch spacer so it'll be exactly the same on each side and then we'll tack up each one of those face plates and give it a nice even looking uh, look so I'm gonna go cut a six inch piece Alright y'all, so I just cut a piece of plywood that I'm going to hang this slider with on this side, put it on that side, hang that, and then I'm going to rip that piece of plywood down so that way it's completely even on both sides because there's just not, this has to be pretty precise. I'm going to try the best I can. So that's about where I want it inside of that little deal there. And then I'm going to press this against the slider, set it back three quarters of an inch. There we go. Now I'm going to tack that slider in without moving it, hopefully. Why don't you clamp it? I can't get a clamp. I don't got to clamp with that big of teeth. Mm. So I got to give it the old, the old Filipino, the old Filipino send, you know what I'm saying? Oh, do you? Yep. The all Filipino sin, huh? Mm-hmm. So I try and put my screw dead center. Oops. And then just press it in before I drill it. Right there. Push it in. Okay, so obviously I took a measure of this and I went out and cut it, right? 17 and a half. But I always start with the base of the drawer so that I could test it in the slider before I actually build the drawer box. So if you look, it's jamming. It's too tight. So I'm going to go take a 16th off and I'm going to keep shaving this until this slips in and out nice and easy. Then I'll build the box off. So I'm going to go take a 16th off of this. Thank you. All right, here's our board. Look at that. Slips in nice and easy. That's what we want. Now let's go build our box. So I've, I've rested this in here, right? And I'm going to mark it and then raise it up about an eighth inch is my plan. All right, y'all, Jaylene is down there doing her thing like a chicken wing. Sounds like something getting stripped down there. But uh, we're going to see if the second drawer works. Second drawer of the day. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Y'all, I just put this drawer in. Oh, uh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Alright, come on, baby. Oh, oh, look at 
that. That one's perfect, bro. All right, last drawer. Moment of truth. Hopefully nothing went wrong on the last drawer, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Please, Jesus. Oh! Did it go in? <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't tell. Ladies and gentlemen, it is day 14 of the 30 day short bus build and the kitchen cabinet is done. It took four days. We estimated two, it took a double, but like I think it's freaking gorgeous. It was so intricate. I'm going to show you what we got. So we put a little closet dowel right here so whoever could have a little bit of storage hang some coats sweatshirts you know whatever um we hid the propane tank over here with this little cabinet deal and every hinge and slider in here is soft closed so it'll lock open and lock shut and it won't swing out so there's no need for locks like you see in a lot of rvs all this stuff stays completely dialed in um this and we decided, you know, to try to get fancy. So we did inset doors, inset drawers, and I gotta say, I feel like I leveled up on this one a little bit. So check this out, inset door, soft close, so locks open. And then Jaylena did add this little lip here to keep it from uh, going in. Boom, shuts by itself. Look at that, boom. Uh, the foot pump isn't hooked up yet. It's going to be a manual system. And we got 500 pound sliders for the set power fridge. Again, we'll have a discount code in the description on the fridge. Get a little bit of money off if you end up wanting to go with these. And it's got a locking slider. So just pull it out, open it up, do your thing, push it back in, locks. So it won't slide out when you drive. This is a burner, two burner that Rec Pro provided. I have a discount code for these two. We were originally trying to put a three burner oven combo. There just wasn't room. And then Rec Pro just pff, overnighted this two burner. I honestly think I like it better because like, look how much space it doesn't take. And then when you shut it, like you don't lose your countertop. That's why we also like this sink. So this is a one inch butcher block um, countertop usually it's inch and a half this was so much lighter and then Jaylena also had the idea of cutting um, the extra we had of this to set in the sink so it just it's just flushing clean across the whole thing Whew. now moving over here we got a silverware drawer soft close slider again we're using leather straps. I kind of like these things for some reason. And bam. And we did use um, pre-finished maple. So this industrial finish. And then we got another drawer for whatever. Another drawer for whatever. Another drawer. Pots and pans. This one's a little deeper. By the way, this took all day to do these. This is really cool. So this isn't a drawer. It's like a little drop-down door that Jaylena made. Because, again, we got a wheel well, wheel well here, so not much you can really do with it. So Jaylena put this all together, and it just kind of closes that space up, and it has a locking deal there. So the kitchen cabinet is done. It took four days for what you see right here. 
Me and Jalen are both really hyped on it. We think it looks amazing. So that's going to be the end of this video. And next up, we're going to be making a bench seat. So this is a 30-day short bus build. If you're new here, uh, consider subscribing if you want to learn how to build a bus or you want to see a bus getting built. So, And we also do Bus Life Adventure. So everybody who keeps coming back, we love and appreciate you. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.